cows are milked all over Europe. But this milk won't be poured over cornflakes. It's got a higher calling. And in just over a week, it's going to be camembert cheese. Every day, over 100,000 litres of fresh milk are delivered to this factory. The milk is transported into tanks, where it's heated to kill any bacteria. Lactic acid is added to sour the milk. Then mold spores are added. Although they're only a thousandth of a millimetre in size, they'll still have a big effect on the final product. The soured milk is poured into large tubs that hold up to 2,000 litres. And an enzyme is added which will thicken the mixture. The mixture is set and can be separated into curds and whey. First, a grid of small squares cuts lengthways. Then another grid cuts sideways. The cubes sink to the bottom and the liquid whey deposits on top. It's all sieved through a machine and most of the whey is drained off. The cubes are then firmly pressed into round pots and for the first time it starts to look like cheese. Each pot is flipped several times. This removes any remaining whey and compresses the cubes further. Stacked on trays, the pots are turned several more times before they join 200,000 other pots for a 10-hour rest. The next step is a salt bath. This helps to preserve the cheeses. After a wash and a rest, the cheeses are now solid enough to be removed from their moulds. It's also time for the mould spores that were added earlier to kick into action as they're sent off to mature. As they're exposed to oxygen, the spores grow on the surface. The camembert is regularly turned to avoid the mould growing on the grid. The effect of the mould is to reduce the acid growing on the cheese's skin and to ripen the inside, giving it a creamy texture. This process gives the cheese its distinctive flavour and smell. After seven days, the cheese is ready to be packed. You might be used to seeing camembert in wedges or full round blocks. But here it's cut in halves and they're wrapped individually.
the halves are reunited in a cardboard box. And then they're ready to be eaten off crackers, toasted in sandwiches, or even melted down at a fondue party.